head. How you doing, baby? You look good? You straight? You sure? You sure? Okay. I gotta ask, you know, because I've been unloading a lot of shit. I have been unloading a lot. And I don't think I've ever taken the time to stop and make sure you was good. So I'm just asking, you know. <laughs> what I can say is I appreciate you being here listening to me and not judging me for, you know, needing a moment and needing to, to vent more than I need to listen. But I think that now <clears throat> I've gotten to the place or to this place where I think things are coming to an end. For real, for real. Like everything is just really running its course now. And I'm just ready to talk about other shit. Because I realize it's like, okay. On one hand, I want to say I realize where I fucked up. By getting into this relationship. Um, And then on another hand, it's like. I don't feel like this happened to me. This happened for me. It was a reason why. Just like it was a reason why, you know, the shit happened to me when I was younger and I had to experience, you know, saying something and not really getting anything and, excuse me, and then getting to a place where I'm like, fuck it, what's the point of talking anyway? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. It's late. I've been doing a lot today just to try to make myself tired, but, um, it's definitely been a day. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I just feel like, and I know somebody out there is going to be like, that's the stupidest shit to say. Why would you, why would you say some shit like this happened for you, for you to do what, for you to, to what? And I already know too. That people are going to look at this and say, I'm either trying to capitalize off of my trauma or my child's trauma or the situation, or you just trying to make money off of your, your, of a, a, a tragic situation that happened to you. It's not, it's not, it's like, I've thought of all of that shit. (laughs) First and foremost, let me break it down. Um, why would I say that this happened for me and not to me? Because I feel like, like I was explaining, everything that has happened in my life led me to this point. Um, it prepared me for the, this moment or the moment that happened, right? And there were so many things, so many different things that I can point out to you in my life that helped me when I needed it most to handle this situation with my daughter. It it just, it did. And that's why I feel like this situation happened for me and not to me because it happened for me to break the generational curse. Like we all talk about breaking generational curses and shit like that and, and healing the, the your child, the inner child and all of this shit like that. But it's like, I don't think people really understand the fact that When you put these words out there and you say this shit into the universe, the universe hears what you're saying. Spirit hears what you're saying. And you out here just like thinking that shit is sweet, like you ain't supposed to get tested. You get tested every day, B. And I ain't from New York, but I like the way that shit sounds. You get tested every day. It's just sometimes some tests are bigger than others to see how bad you really want the things that you want. Now, yeah, I could have took this situation and just sat on it and just dealt with it like I do every fucking, like I've done everything in my life. Just sit on it. Don't say nothing. Don't put a voice to it. Just just dealt with it quietly. I could have. I could have. But I was like, no. There's a reason why this happened. And one of the reasons why it happened is because I always said I wanted to use my voice for good. I've always been that person who when something bothers them, shit don't go right. I don't say anything. I don't. I just take it. I just, I just take the abuse. I, I, I take it. I internalize it. I write it down. I eventually get it out, but not as fast as it should be released. Not as fast as the energy should be flowing. Um, so 
I understand my purpose. I understand that when I said I wanted to break generational curses, spirit was like, it's a lie. It comes with a lie. It comes with a lie. And you have to understand all of the things that you've went through in your life. This situation may arise again in order for you to do something different. In order for you to make a change. Because how is the how is the curse going to be broken? If somebody doesn't change it. You know? I don't know if my grandmother ever seen anything. I'm pretty sure she probably did. Or experienced anything when it came to sexual trauma. But she never said anything. And if she did, because my grandma don't talk, I don't, she don't really say anything. If she did say something, maybe she said something and nothing happened. And then from there on, she just moved accordingly. I'd be like, you know, kidding. Then you got my mom, who I don't think my mom ever dealt with sexual trauma to herself i don't think i don't remember her ever telling me a story and she's told me plenty of stories she's repeated a lot of stories a lot but i don't remember her ever saying anything like that but what i do remember her saying is sharing the story with me about her own father and how when she got older or as she was growing up she would hear stories about her dad and how her dad would um how her dad would tried to go after her sister's friend. And I'm not 100% because she told me this story like once or twice. I'm not 100%, but I want to say something about how, I want to say that she said something about how my grandfather also possibly tried his own children. He definitely tried the friends whenever they brought the friends over. So then they stopped wanting to bring the friends over and the friends didn't want to come over anymore because your dad is weird. And then I think she told me about how as she got older and she had her own friends, the same thing was happening, I think. But I know for sure she said the shit about my grandfather coming on to my aunt's friends when they were underage or just looking at them and they were underage. You know what I'm saying? It just made me feel weird. And then for her, it was like, but that's my dad. I love my dad. That's my superhero. You know, and then having this 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 way that you look at men. And she just passed that shit on to me. Just passed that shit right on down. But he's the provider. He's taking care of. He's doing this and doing that. He's the man. He's the man. But this man is being perverted. And I'm not saying that there aren't some perverted ass women out there as well, because there are. But I haven't seen the studies that said that women do it more than men. It's mostly men who are the predators, who are the perverts. But there are also perverted women as well. But statistically, it's mostly men. It ain't even equal. But again, it's just like, my mom has just this amazing, brilliant mind. And I'm just rambling right now. I'm just talking. I'm just trying to get some thoughts out. My mom has an amazing, brilliant mind. I've, my mom wanted to write plays. I've seen notebooks with stuff in it that my mom has written. It's just really fucking good stuff. Never finished it. At least the stuff I saw wasn't finished. But just really good stuff. Business-wise, just business savvy. My mom could have done so many things and showed me so much shit, but she didn't have the tools. She didn't have the tools. And as I've gotten older, I understand that and I don't blame her. I don't blame her. She might think I do, but that's because she listens to respond to what I'm saying instead of listening to hear what I'm saying, to understand that I'm, I'm actually giving her a compliment, that I'm actually applauding her. So I don't blame her for the shit that she didn't have. The only thing that pisses me off about it is the fact that my mom does not take accountability. She'd rather um, 
tell you about some shit that happened in her life or tell you how she doesn't have the tools instead of just saying, you know what? Other than the fact that I didn't have the tools, I fucked up. You know, I could have did that better. I, I really could have handled that situation better. I handled it in the best of my abilities at the time, but I see how hindsight is twenty twenty. I could have handled that situation a lot better. It's like anytime I try to have a conversation with her about it, it's just she thinks that I'm pointing the finger at her when I'm just trying to get her to see and to be accountable. And she don't like that shit. It's like she doesn't want to hear that she is anything like her own mother because she doesn't really like her mom or the relationship that they have. And because she doesn't like that and because she has her own transgressions and she's done her own shit, now that you have a child who's old enough to let you know because you won't let my grandma know what she did. You just tell me about it. But because you got a child that's older to let you know, this is so brand new to you. You're proud of me. You're happy. But it scares you. Because it's questions that you're like, I don't really feel like I have the answer to these questions. I don't think I don't think she has the answer to them. Or I think maybe she feels like her answers aren't good enough. I don't know. I'm left with my own thoughts of what to fucking think. I don't know because she won't tell me. But anywho, moving on. What was passed down that is important is the fact that 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 standard, that that male, just that looking up to that male, like he is the man, he is, you know, putting that male on the pedestal. And even to this day, my mom cries. She will cry over the fact of you know, not having more time with her dad, not going to see him when she should have, when she felt like she should have seen him um, at the hospital and all of this different stuff because she didn't want to see him like that. And that was her Superman. And it's still hard for her to believe that he did what, what was told to her that he did. Still hard. And I believe that's the reason why it was so hard for her when it came to a relationship that she was in where, yeah, I might have been, I think, what was I? Shit. I had to be like 17, 18, I think. I was like 17, 18. Between 17 and 19. Couldn't have been 19. though. I was either 17 or 18 when this shit happened. But, you know, I'm old enough to kind of like, you know, protect myself in a sense and speak up for myself and you know that I ain't on no bullshit in, in a sense and I'm telling you some shit that happened or I'm explaining something that happened between me and your, your man that you're supposed to be with right now that you say love you so much all up your ass so much make you feel so good oh my goodness our stories are so similar because the same man that she kicked me out over when I, you know, same man she kicked me out over, he had the same issues as the man that I was with. With this situation that's going on with me, same situation. Only difference is I know fully of what was going on with the person I was with. Bipolar, schizophrenic, ADHD. I know that. For her situation, I know bipolar. For my sister's dad, I know bipolar. I don't know anything else, but I know bipolar and I know drugs because I've seen it. I was around it. I know violence because I've seen it. Didn't physically see him swing at anybody, but I've seen her face. I've seen him come at me. He came at me aggressively to do something to me. Didn't work. But same shit. And you have the opportunity to to leave an ain't shit nigga alone to be with your kid before you even had another kid. Before you even had another kid. You had already had two kids. You know what I'm saying? Before you even had another kid. There were all these signs. Because my sister wasn't here when that situation happened with him and what he did to me. My sister wasn't here yet. So the only difference between my situation and and her situation is the fact that when my situation, the person thought that the more kids they gave me, the more submissive I would be. The more I would just 
just let shit slide. That was his a big manipulation tactic. If I get her to marry me, if I could get her, if I could get her pregnant, keep her pregnant, I got on birth control. Did not like that. Was about to get all of this shit taken out. Did not like that. But again, the difference with our two situations, me and my mother, is just the fact that, you know, I went in head first, fast, real fast, because I'm always looking at my last situation and thinking if shit like that happened in my last situation, you know, if stuff like that happened, then, then such and such is true. It, it's like, it, it triggers things for me. It's like, oh, okay, well then that must be true. Cause I was thinking of this and that must be true. If it happened like this, then it must be true. And I can't turn shit away. A big thing for me after I got out of the relationship with my ex-wife was I was like, I want to, I'm not too much into like, oh, well, you can't meet a person and just know immediately. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can know immediately because that's how it was with me and my ex-wife. It was like, we know what we want. So let's go after it together. And we did. Mm. But I knew for a fact that going out of that relationship and any other relationship or shit that I got myself into after that, time wasn't a factor. I don't even believe in fucking time anyway. I just say it and I bring it up because that's what makes sense here in this world. But I don't believe in that shit. So when you meet somebody and you vibe and you connect, it don't have to be years for you to get married. It takes years to really sometimes for a person to get comfortable in this day and age. It takes sometimes years for a person to really get comfortable and just, they're like an onion. People are like onions. You got to peel back those fucking layers and it takes years to peel back those layers. But that doesn't mean you can't get with somebody today, marry them three months from now and have a long, happy marriage or happy life. It doesn't mean that because you can. People have done it. And yes, shit's going to happen. Because you're two different souls coming together as one. So shit is going to happen. You're going to change. Whenever you decide, if y'all decide that y'all are moving in two totally different directions, then you got to deal with that shit the way it comes. That's the way the fucking cookie crumbles, right? But uh, just trying to navigate every fucking thing. So there was that with that whole like, you know, (laughs) <laughs> that was a long ass explanation for the question of, you know, why, why do you feel, how do you, how can you say that this happened for you and not to you? That's that one. The other one that's going to come up and how I'm going to combat that, this one is I'm trying to gain popularity or capitalize off of trauma, off of child trauma, off of my child's trauma, off of uh, a, a situation that happened that you know is just very traumatic why would you use that to try I'm not I'm not I'm not at all I know my purpose I fully wholeheartedly understand my purpose and I'm standing in that shit I'm standing in my shit And if I don't speak up about it and I don't say nothing about it and I don't make people aware about it, who else is? Somebody else. I'm not saying it ain't going to be nobody, but it ain't going to be me. They're not going to be me. Their story is not mine. My story is not theirs. I feel like this is that part of my life where... I'm supposed to speak of. And this is what's going to ensure that, or I ain't going to say it's going to ensure, this is one thing that could possibly ensure that I'm continuously taking care of my family because that's all I'm trying to do. If I can do this and talk and help somebody and help somebody heal, help somebody understand that they're not alone, help somebody understand understand and understand and navigate their feelings and their emotions. If I can do that, that's what matters to me. I don't have to make a dime from this shit. I don't. But the bonus is fucking nice. 
that added fucking percentage right there ain't, ain't too fucking shabby. The fact that in the event that this fucking does something, somebody hears it and decides to share it and it just fucking spreads like wildfire. It's a possibility that it could mean financial gain for me and my, my family. Why would I not take that opportunity in this day and age? This is a situation that just so happened to happen in the midst of me trying to do something that I've always wanted to do, which was just speak up for myself. I've always wanted to have my own voice and speak up for myself. And I give a fuck about what anybody thinks about it, how anybody feels about it. Of course, we're never trying to hurt anybody's feelings on purpose. I would never say something to purposely hurt anybody. People need to understand the truth don't always feel good. But that don't stop it from being the truth. So if you knew that all you had to do to get to that million dollars was to tell the truth. But ooh, the shit that it's going to take to tell that truth, you going to not tell. Being the fact that even though we're not chasing money, we chasing happiness. But we know that in this world that we live in, we got to have money. Just it just is what it is. We got to have money. You mean to tell me you're going to pass it up? Because of what? Because you don't want to feel pain for however long you need to feel pain in order to heal to come out on the other side a better person. Because you'd rather just keep masking it, masking it, throwing. This is what I, this is, okay, this is leading up to the perfect, the most perfect analogy I ever made in my fucking life. When I first started getting in touch with myself, loving myself, healing myself, learning about myself. The way that it felt was, it was as if I finally decided to say, all right, spirit, all right, universe, show me who the fuck I am because I no longer know. I thought I knew who I was, but this is all some shit that I've just been seeing and I've just been piecing together and putting together. Who the fuck am I? And the universe sat my ass down Set my ass down in front of this, this large rectangular thing. And they sat me there with a bucket. A bucket full of clean, soapy water and a brand new rag. I got one bucket. I got one rag. I don't get no more water. And spirits say, you want to see who you are? Universe say, you want to see who you really are? Put that rag in that water. Start wiping that mirror off. And I'm like, that's it? That's all you want me to do is just clean this mirror? I do this shit all the time. I clean mirrors and glasses all the fucking time. You ain't got no glass cleaner? Mm -mm. All you need is this soapy water, which you don't even really need the soap in it. But you just need this water, this rag, this bucket. This, this all you need. Start chipping away. And I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning. But over the years, all of the shit that have happened, all of the things that I haven't, I've chose to push to the side. I don't want to see it. I don't want to deal with it. What was I doing the whole time to that rectangle? Sitting there just slinging mud on that shit. Constantly throwing mud at that shit because looking into that mirror and looking at my own reflection was too fucking hard. The cross to bear was too fucking hard. I did not feel like doing it. So instead of looking, I throw some mud on it. Throw enough mud on it to the point where you can barely even see. And the things that you do see, I've altered it so much, you kind of think it looks good. It kind of seems okay. But it's not. And the universe said, you want to know some shit? You want to do some shit? Get your ass in front of this mirror. Because we didn't took you as far as we can get you. Now sit your ass in front of this mirror and clean this shit up. Clean this mess up. Boy, that was hard. People don't want to do that. People don't want to sit in front of that dirty ass mirror and clean it because they don't want to see what the fuck is behind. They don't want to see that reflection. That shit sucks sometimes. That shit sucks. It's scary. It's sad. It's painful. It takes work. 
Because my mirror was dirty. There was layers, layers of dirt. And it wasn't no, oh, if you, well, I could just get a chisel because a lot of this stuff on this mirror is hard. I could just, I could get it off real, no. The universe said no. Because then we could give you the chisel, but you run the risk of going too fast, rushing the process and breaking the mirror. Now, once you've broken the mirror and you look into the mirror, you're in many pieces now. You were already in pieces, but you were still together. Now you're in many pieces and it's easier for them shits to fall apart. Then what do you do? Then what? Do you want to get to that point? Do you want to completely start over with a fresh, brand new mirror? Or would you rather sit with yourself, get in tune with yourself, and clean that fucking mirror off? The choice is yours, honey. Just know, at the end of it all, regardless of what you choose, one leads to a more pleasant, a more pleasant outcome. And the other leads to a not so pleasant outcome. Now, even with this not so pleasant outcome, we can st- it can still be safe. We can still save it. But it's even more work than if you just sit here with this outcome and just do what you got to do. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. But people don't want to do that. And that's what I had to do. So a big thing for me right now with this situation coming to grips with everything for myself is understanding that I sat at that mirror. I sat at that mirror. I sat at that mirror for three years. No distraction. I sat at that mirror from end of 2018 until was a minute 18 19 19 20 yeah no I actually started sitting at that mirror in 2017 to be honest that's where the three years because I want to say no because I stopped in 2020 that's where the three years comes from 2017 is when I started to work and I didn't want to see it then but I kept telling spirit that I did And it kept sitting my ass down. Every time I would get my ass up from in front of that mirror, it kept sitting my ass down. And I kept getting up, kept getting up, kept getting up. The hardest part was when Spirit was like, look now, we tired of this shit. We're going to sit your ass in this room. We didn't took all the windows and all the doors away. Now you ain't got shit. Now you really ain't got nothing. You have no choice but to sit here and do this shit. And then I had a period of time for like a year and a half where it was just me. Nobody, no other person. I wasn't entertaining. Nobody wasn't doing nothing. It was just me sitting with me. So to know that I did that work, to know that I did that kind of work to end up in this place where I'm at right now. Yes, it makes me question myself. It does. That's human. I'm human. That's human shit. It's going to make me question But spiritually, what I know to be true is I know that everything happened the way that it happened for a reason. And it may be the shittiest thing, one of the shittiest things ever that could happen to a person. It may be that. But I'm telling you right now, the only reason why And I hate to say that I'm happy that it happened because I know somebody's going to take that shit out of context. I hate to say that, but that's all I got. The only reason why I'm okay with what happened is because now I have the opportunity to be that voice. Now I have that opportunity to help other people. Now I have that opportunity to be that listening ear, to help people navigate through some shit. Now I have that opportunity to really share the shit that I've always wanted to talk about and say. Because it's been so much shit. But this right here, this really, this situation really. And I've been doing this shit for a minute. This ain't brand new. That's why, again, I said with the Journey Journal, it's like I started doing all of this. 
a while ago. It just so happened that this is the thing. This is what happened along the journey. And I don't want to cut anything out. Excuse me. I don't want to cut anything out. I don't want to leave no stone unturned. Today, I was looking at pictures. I got on Instagram and I pretty much had blocked him on most social media, but I had blocked him on Instagram. And then there's stuff on my Instagram, like on my personal page that has him on there, which I have deleted some of it now. I think I only got like one thing. But I was looking at pictures today and I was looking at videos and it's just like, it's like I still don't understand how somebody with so much potential to be so great could just allow this emotion to just take them like that and just allow this shit to fester. You allow anger, frustration, all that shit. If you don't flow through your emotions, your energy motions, that's what I like to call them. If you don't flow through that shit, that energy gets stuck. And that energy festers and it grows and it grows and it gets bigger. And then it gets so big to where that's the only emotion you can hear. You can't hear nothing else. It don't want you to hear nothing else. Because you've gotten so used to dealing with that emotion, you can't even let other shit in. It won't allow you to let other shit in. It won't allow you to let nothing else out but it. It won't allow you, allow you to let anything else in but it. And anytime you do, it shuts that shit down. As soon as it feels like you're getting too comfortable with the other emotions and not giving it any more attention, it shuts that shit down. So, that's where I am. Just trying to navigate my feels still. But just now it's like, you know, Gosh, I don't want to cry anymore. I'm just so tired of crying. But it's like I'm, I'm, I have to mourn the death of a person who isn't even dead. And it sucks because it's, this is so different from a relationship or, or a relationship where, you know, you have an argument. Y'all fuss, y'all fight, and then you know in the, it, it's inevitable that you might break up, but yeah, and then you break up, and then you navigate that shit, but this is different. This is just, motherfucker was here that morning, and that's it. You don't see them anymore. They're gone, and you know the reason, but it's just like, damn, I still, it's so many emotions attached. I'm going to say this because I know somebody out there is going to need to hear this. And this shit is hard, man. But honestly, wholeheartedly, I miss him. I miss him. I miss him so much because I miss, I miss the good. I miss the, the love that I felt. Ain't no way. Ain't no way you gonna get me to believe that there was no love there. Even though in my head with the shit that happened, it's like, nigga, you got played. The fuck are you talking about? But then it's like, there's no way to know. There's really no way to know if you got played and how far back the shit went. There's really no way to know. I won't talk to him for closure because I feel like I'll never get it because I don't feel like I can believe anything to come out of your mouth. But then at the same time, I'm just, I, my soul just, my soul just weeps for what was. I hurt for what I thought I had. I 
I just really thought I had something. I thought I had my person. I thought I had my fucking person. I just knew I had my person. Shit was so good. Shit was so good, man. even to know that I was like I was even to the place where I was like it's time like it's time to get married and shit it's two kids later we already talking about having another kid eventually but we gotta get out of this situation we gotta get out of where we at we need more space for ourselves for our family like we need all of that and shit started to seem like it was looking up but I just kept trying to add him into some shit that he wasn't supposed to be there for. I was just supposed to have my baby. I was just supposed to have my girls. That's all he was supposed to give me. Once he gave me my girls, that was it. It was a wrap and it only took three years. By the power of three. But I have been, I, I just started, I just started thinking about getting married again, think like really thinking heavy because I was like, you know, I already look at marriage different anyway, but I was just like, fuck it. I call this person my husband. He's been calling me his wife since I met him. I call this person my husband now. We even got the freaking bands, the, uh, the gym bands and shit. He was wearing a gym band and I shit you not. Uh, I want to say like maybe two, three months ago, two, three months ago, my band popped. My band was, I found my band in the house and it was popped. And then he stopped wearing his for a while and then he started back wearing it. But mine popped. It was like all these signs that was just hitting it all at once and I just was not paying attention to it because I just wanted so desperately so badly I was like I got my person now I got him like I'm not even looking at nobody else I'm not worried about nobody else even when shit would happen with dreams and stuff or thoughts would come into my head about one of my exes and I was like why the fuck is this why is he popping up in my head so much as if he's about to pop up somewhere why is he thinking about me why I gotta be on why though if I'm with my person and I'm happy with who I'm with, why? Like, I was that person. Like, I was literally, I couldn't believe I had got to that place within myself. Because as people, as human beings, you know, we human. Even though you got your person, you still can find other people attractive, right? But I don't know. It's just something about when you really feel like you got your person. It's like, yeah, there's other, I'm not stupid. There's other attractive people out there, but I'm, I don't care. I'm not looking at those people. I'm looking at my person because I feel like I'm getting everything that I possibly could need from my person when I really wasn't. I really wasn't getting everything. I really wasn't. My ego was being stroked. My ego was being stroked like a fucking cat. And somebody that hates cats and show stroking my shit like a fucking cat. But, yeah, just trying to eliminate everything, all the reminders, all the pictures. Today, I tried to go in my, not my laptop, but my computer. And I was just like, man, I need to start deleting all these pictures. Because I had pictures from when we were, you know, he was still in another state. I was where I'm at. And we was video chatting like every fucking day. Go to sleep on video chat. Wake up on video chat, video chat every day, all day, damn near. Pictures from that, and I just had to delete everything. I deleted a lot of pictures from uh, just mostly anything that had him in it. But then it came to the point of me having pictures with our youngest daughter. No, not our youngest, sorry, our oldest together. 
pictures of her in the hospital and him holding her. And I was like, let me delete all this shit. And then I was like, no, I'm going to save it because I'm not going to be like that towards my kids. If I have memories that they can have, I'm going to save it for them. I'm going to give it to them. Like, what's the point? I Just because I don't necessarily like that person, that don't take nothing away from you. That's dumb. Still have pictures of my oldest daughter's father for her, put away for her. Like family pictures, put away for her. And not for me anymore, they're for her. Um, but I was like, yeah, let me just take all these pictures. And I was trying to make a file for them. And I made a file and I put them all in the file. And then I thought where I moved the file to, that I could delete the file from where it originally was. And when I deleted it from where it was, it deleted it from where I moved it to. And I was like, okay, cool. I could just go to my recycle bin and just pop it on out, bring it right back out. It was gone. Shit was gone. And I just, after a while of me really trying to sit at my computer and figure out how the fuck can I get it and go and clicking through all these different pictures, trying to get them and get them back, they weren't there. They just weren't fucking there. And I took that as a sign from the universe that she didn't need them. I really was genuinely trying to keep them because she didn't need them. And I don't know if that's a sign in saying that, you know, what's the point of her having the pictures if he's going to do something to himself and no longer be there? Or what's the point of having those pictures if she'll never see him? She'll never see him until she's an adult when she decides to go find him herself. She'll never see him. What's the point? But to me, it didn't matter. I still wanted to have that for her. I didn't want to take that away from her. But when they were deleted, I was just like, there's nothing I can do. I can't find them. And I was just like, whatever. And I deleted the rest of what I had to get off of my computer. I deleted what I needed to get out of my phone. Um, like I said, just tonight, just going through social media and just seeing his face and just knowing that there was so much behind that person, behind those eyes. But it was nothing I could do for them. No amount of help. Nothing. And even when it came to the marriage shit, it was like, I wanted to get married, but I, I knew I needed to wait. Like, for whatever reason with him, I just was like, nah, I gotta wait. I gotta do this shit right. Like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it right. Because again, I look at marriage totally different than the average human being. Now, I do. I didn't do that before. So I was like, first and foremost, before I get married to anybody, they got to understand of how I look at it. Because if you want something outside of how I look at it, I'm not the person for you. You need to go find that person. Um, but I was ready. Just recently, I was ready. I was like, we need to do this. This is going to help us. And I was ready. And spirit was like, uh-uh, you about to fuck up. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful. When I say what I say, and I'm getting ready to say it now, because I'm getting ready to get off of here because I got some stuff that I need to do. But um, when I say what I say at the end of these videos and I say thank you for showing up to, for yourself, I promise you, I'll be talking to myself. I'll be talking to y'all. I'll be talking to y'all, but I'll be talking to myself because it takes a lot. Sometimes people don't understand it takes a lot to just show up. It takes a lot to show up in general, but it takes a hell of a lot to show up for yourself. A lot. Because there's so much shit out here to get you to not do that. So when somebody does it, it's some real shit. And the only people who are going to talk about it and hate and have some stupid shit negativity to say, excuse me, are people who don't have the courage to do it themselves. You can talk about other people doing it, but what have you done for yourself? How have you healed yourself? And don't even sit here and try, I don't need to heal myself. I've been good. No, you haven't. Not with that negativity you spewing. No, you haven't. You haven't done any work. You're not fine. You're not okay. But you can keep telling yourself that to try to convince yourself that you're not okay. And that's okay. It's okay to not be okay. 
But you got to figure out what is it inside of you that you're seeing inside of me that's making you dislike yourself because there's some kind of mirror. Maybe it's the fact that you know you can be this happy too. Maybe it's the fact that you know deep down you can do this work too, but you just don't have the courage to. And my message to that person is, baby, it's all right. Talk about me like a dog. I don't care. Say what you want to say. I don't care. But I hope for you, because I'm going to take that energy and transmute it anyway. And how I'm going to push it back out is I hope for you that you figure out whatever it is when you look at me, the mirror. When you look at me, the dirty mirror, and you cleaning it with that rag, what what part of when you started cleaning it did you decide, I don't want to see that part? Nope, I don't want to see that part. Can we throw mud back on that part? Because I don't, I don't want to see that part. I don't like the way that part looks. Is it scary to know that you can be that happy? Or to be this happy? Or to be this healed? Is it scary to know that you might have to be by yourself to do it? That's scary as hell. That's even scary for me to admit. Because I'm a kind of person, I love a body. I will take a body. And I will take the bullshit that come with it, but no more. I can't do that shit no more. That shit is over. Still a lot to unpack. But we getting there. Slowly but surely. And if you still here after all of this, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Just thank you. Because there's something within you that wants to change or just wants to feel something different. And you're hoping that by the time you get to the end of this, you'll know what it is or you have figured it out. And I'm here to tell you, you might not. You might not know it right away. But whatever that thought is, whatever it brought up in you, get you a notebook, baby. Get you a notebook, get you a pencil, get your phone, your notes in your phone. I don't give a fuck what it is. Get it. Jot it down, whatever the hell it is. Figure it out now or figure it out later. But figure that shit out. Figure that shit out. Don't let it eat you up no more. It's not your job to let that shit eat you up. That's not what life is about. It's not. You've gotten used to that. You've gotten used to that feeling of just dealing with it. No. It's not time to deal with that shit no more. It's time to let it go. Spirit said it's time to let it go. So whatever it is, whatever it is that you're looking for, back here on this hidden track, because I love me a good hidden track. But back here, whatever it is that you're searching for, I really hope you find it. And I know that you will. And it may take some time. Just understand, or at least not even understand, very bottom level, the very first level that you get to is understand at least understand you may not get it right now but you will when you need to and that is one of the biggest lessons one of the biggest lessons I've had to learn on my spiritual journey a lot of shit is going to hit you all at once a lot of shit is going to hit you all the time and you may not understand what the hell it means right away but write it down because eventually that shit's going to circle back around. I'm telling you, it's going to circle back around. It's going to make sense. It's going to make sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing up for yourself. I love you. Take care of yourself. Drink your water. And mind your goddamn business. Mind the business that pays you, if any at all. And I don't mean by money. It could pay you with love. It could pay you with smiles. It could pay you with peace. Just mind the business that pays your ass, at least. I'm a walking Dr. Seuss book, nigga. <laughs> I fucking love you, bro. God damn. <laughs>